warning, this is a movie discussion as well as a review. There are lots and lots of spoilers. The Mummy. What the fuck can a bitch-ass guy is set? The God of Death? Really? He's supposed to be a demon. And he's supposed to be so powerful. But this nigga can't even defeat Tom Cruise's will to save Becky. Tom Cruise is 55 years old. He damn near a senior citizen. And Seth is supposed to be an immortal god. And you know what? Let me uh let me back up here for a second because the the setup they gave us is bullshit. I'm Annette, and I hope I'm saying that right. I can't remember. She made a pact with Set to bring him to life in the body of a mortal man. So the whole point was so they could take revenge on humanity, and Set has power over life and death. How? When he finally gets here, he doesn't even have power over the fucking body he's in. Now it's just Tom Cruise with Set's powers. Yes, Set, the demon god of death himself, was, he's like suppressed or at least temporarily defeated by Tom Cruise in 30 seconds. No fight, no real climax, just Tom Cruise's will to save a white woman. And then his eyes change back and forth, whatever. Set, he is not very powerful, is he? Or maybe he just gave in because he was so thrilled to be a white man, like, Fuck all this power over life and death and shit. What's this I hear about trips to the farmer's market? Bullshit. Either way, Set is an immortal nothing. An immortal bitch. That's about it. So, I don't really know what to say about this movie. Um, I'm going to refer to this Nick character as Tom Cruise. Because you're not watching a well-written and well-developed character. You're watching Tom Cruise. And somehow the whole movie became about him anyway. Like, just all about him. And I'm going to run down um, some likes and dislikes, whatever. And I'm going to start with my first dislike, which is a combination of the casting and the actors. Tom Cruise should never have been casted in this role. And it's not just his near senior citizen status. He just wasn't a good fit for this. And some of it may be the writing. I don't know. It wasn't a good character. And Tom Cruise, he's no Brendan Fraser. And I hate to compare the two, but he just couldn't bring that believable comedy. And neither could Bale. That was his, you know, partner, whatever you want to call him, played by Jake Johnson. I guess he's supposed to be comedic relief, but all he does is yell. And, you know, I can tell where the writers were going you know, or what they were trying to go for with this duo, but they just totally missed the mark with these two. And then there's Jenny, the one-dimensional archaeologist, who's only really there to end up being a damsel in distress. Her character could have been put to use a little better, okay? She could read the hieroglyphics and, you know, she could understand ancient Egyptian, but overall her character just, I don't know, it not only lacked depth, but I'm not sure she really even could think for herself. You know, like she claims to be working for Jekyll only because they have common interests. But knowing the whole purpose of a prodigium, she wasn't smart enough to realize that he didn't snatch Aminette up to have brunch and in-depth conversations about that mummy life. You know, he hunts and destroys evil for a fucking living. And and, and she couldn't figure that out. You know, like what is she thinking? I, re- I recall like, three times she had to be told to run I just don't understand why her character um didn't bring anything to me to to the film and then last um Dr. Jekyll I didn't really have a problem with Russell Crowe in this role he did okay with what he was given but the character in the writing anybody who knows this character knows that his transformation is a little more dramatic um the, the whole point of Mr. Hyde is that he can get away with things and no one will know that he and Dr. Jekyll are one and the same. So for him to look exactly the same kind of defeats the purpose. Um, but anyway, um, how the, the question really is, how did Dr. Jekyll, you know, th- this historic character, how did he get thrown into this movie? Where did he come from? And the short version um, is that Universal Studios or Universal Pictures whatever, um, is creating their own universe. And that's like, you know, in MCU, DCEU fashion, um, and it's called Dark Universe. And Universal has released, oh, who knows how many monster movies over the last, like, century. You know, think Dracula, Frankenstein, um, The Invisible Man, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The Mummy is the first 
film released as part of this new universe that they're creating. So you know where this is going. And Dr. Jekyll's business, Prodigium, uh, which according to him is Latin for the morning of monsters, um, he says their job is to recognize, contain, examine, and destroy evil. So since he works on controlling the evil part of himself, uh, I guess, um, he's, I guess he's supposed to be leading this effort across the board. I don't know. Um, he's decided to rid the world of all evil, I guess. The, the thing is, though, um, when they get to his little lair or whatever, he has quite a collection, you know. He, um, he collects little trophies from defeated evil beings. <laughs> but one other thing I noticed is that he has some torturing devices laying around. So Mr. High is fucking people up, isn't he? Um, I don't, is he only torturing the evil guys or what? I'm not 100% sure where they're going um, with this character because there's been a lot of um, interpretations of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, but it's interesting that at the end, he, he doesn't see Tom Cruise as a potential ally, you know, given how similar they are now. And even Jenny tells him that, you know, Cruise will be a great fit at, at Prodigium. And Jekyll's like, well, he's a monster. And if that ain't the pot calling the kept he got his goddamn nerve. Uh, my next dislike is that I was expecting and hoping for more from Aminet. Her character is kind of intriguing. The backstory is cool. Uh, they rushed it uh, just a little bit in the movie. I let that slide, though. You know, her look, her overall motivation. She was by far the most promising character in the film. And she should have been. You know, it's presumably about her. Um, and she was supposed to be like this real badass, but aside from conjuring up a few sandstorms and busting all the windows and, and shit and, you know, beating the shit out of Becky, she just left me unimpressed. You know, her escape from Dr. Jekyll's change was pretty cool. Um, but I would have liked to see her do something that hasn't been done a million times in these mummy movies, reanimating dead bodies and sucking the life out of people. Been there, done that. What else you got? My next dislike is this film was the epitome of mediocre. The effects, the, uh, the costumes, the comedy, the action, the romance, you know, the, the writing, the acting, the casting, like at least one of those areas should have exceeded the rest. It was just like nothing stood out. I can't say one thing in particular was good because none of that was particularly good. Um, I only laughed one time, and that was when Tom Cruise tried to roll up on Aminette with a tree branch, and she uppercut his ass to the treetops. That shit was funny. Uh, my next dislike, uh, the whole subplot with Tom Cruise being a selfish asshole, and he's supposed to grow to be selfless, which ultimately means save a Becky, you know, because there's a good man in there. Whatever. A little more subtlety would have been nice here. And my last dislike, I already talked about, Seth showed up. Saved Becky, killed Omnit, all in about 19 seconds. I would have loved if that conflict had been given a little more screen time. Um, I feel like we waited so long for that moment and it felt rushed. But it does look like there's a, I want to say sequel coming, but I don't know what's going to come because, you know, it's this whole new universe thing. So maybe they'll show up in another movie. I don't know. Um, but those are, are all my dislikes. So on to my likes. Um... Are we giving credit for potential? Because I don't have any likes. Like I said before, nothing about this movie stood out. So as far as a rating, I'm going to give it a three and a personal recommendation to Tom Cruise to stick to Mission Impossible and stay in his goddamn lane. I know this is the first film, you know, like I said, in this dark universe, but uh, they're off to a terrible start. I hope this gets better. Um... Follow me on Twitter, like, subscribe, hit me up. You can talk to me, whatever. Let me know what's up.